2,000 years ago, Christ has spoken with God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being with Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all may believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. With all of his true friends, who believed in his name, he did he did father to come from his God. We were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I've come to tell you to repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Prepare the way, for the Lord made you pass for him. For his word will become flesh and live among us, and we shall see his glory. The glory as of our Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. 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 In those days, there was a young girl called Mary. She was engaged to marry a man named Joseph, who was in the family of David. She was very happy as the wedding day grew closer. Mary closed her eyes to thank the Lord and prayer. As she was praying to the Lord, sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town of Galilee, to the Virgin Mary. And as she opened her eyes, the angel spoke. Well, Mary was very startled and afraid by what the angel said and wondered what this greeting might be. How will this happen since I'm not married yet? Yes, you will become pregnant and give birth to son, and his name is Jesus. He will be great, and his kingdom will never end. Amen. 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 Mary got up and went quickly to the town of the hills of Judea. She believed God and shared her joy with Elizabeth, Zachariah, and Joseph, who was prepared. <laughs> Joseph the carpenter was very disturbed and suspicious of Mary. He said to God, I can't do this. <laughs> 
Are you? Huh? Joseph, why are you mumbling? What is that mumble? Are you talking to yourself? How did that happen? Man, tell us to see what the Holy Spirit grow you or something else. Hmm. <laughs> The Bible says, But as he considered these things, the golden angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Amani <laughs> Nari. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Mary will have a baby, and you should name him Jesus. Amen. When Joseph woke up from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife until she had given birth to a son, and he would call his name Jesus. So Joseph took Mary from the town of Nazareth to Bethlehem, the town of David. They walked a long journey. Mary was tired. Joseph went to the town of Bethlehem to register with Mary. He was expecting a child. When Joseph and Mary got to Bethlehem, there was no place for them to stay because all the inns were already full. They approached the woman in the first inn. Joseph walked over to the second inn. He could see some animals in what looked like shepherds. Do you have any room for us to stay in? Excuse me, there's a guy out back with an extremely pregnant wife and has no cash. I don't think the donkey will make another mile. He's asking for whatever room we have available. Oh, for crying out loud, tell them they can stay in the stable behind the internet and I want them gone in the morning. The donkey stays there too. Take that old bag from when you swatted the clothes to this. I don't think the person who left them in the room is coming back for them. Maybe the guy with the pregnant wife can take them. Joseph and Mary ended up spending the night in the stable for a place, a place where animals and old swaddling clothes were kept. There was fresh hay on the floor that they used to bed. That night, Jesus was born. There was no crib for the late feeding Jesus in the manger, where there was a feeding trough for the animals. The, the manager had fresh hay and it had been a nice bed for me. Do you know what I did? Playing the sound of your child crying and music. Listen, it's coming from our back of the barn. It sounds like a heart. Yeah, someone is singing. I can't make out the words, but I can make out. Do you hear what I hear? It must be that it must be that rock band group. Ugh, the little drummer boys again. Now there were a group of shepherds abiding in the field. They were keeping watch over their flock by night. And so the angel of the Lord came upon them, <laughs> and the glory of the Lord shined about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, <laughs> They need a mic? They need a mic? Here. Here. Here the mic. Go ahead. And the angel said unto them, Amen. Angels, angels were meeting the Nikio. Your child's here. He's very beautiful. Aww. The angel departed, and suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and praying. No, it's good, it's good. What's next?
angels left and went away into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, Go, 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 sheep, sheep, condo. Go, 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 go. All of them. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph with the baby lying in the baby. And when they had seen Jesus, they proclaimed the word of God and over the mountain, saying, Good news about the child. Are they going now? Now there were three wise men from the east who traveled nine hundred Three wise men. The wise men were scholars of astrology. God guided them to live wise men? the wise men. Who's the wise man? The star of God was Are you the wise man? Yeah. Go, 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 go. Wise men, go. And so they came to Jerusalem and asked them the birth of Christ, and they were directed to that one. Go, 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 go. Amen. Go, go, go. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Give me a mic. Amen. And then? After the three wise men had seen Jesus, God warned them that he would not return to his parents. So when the blinds of the king, they left to they left to by another route. The people followed the guidance of God, and forever they worshiped Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. There he kept all these things and honored them in her heart. When the shepherds returned, returned. The kings brought gifts. And the people in the world glorified and praised God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Is that it? Huh? Let's go, let's go. All of them. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 all of you. Go, 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 go. go. Baraka, go all the way there. Go all the way. 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 All of you. Go, 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 go all the way. All the way. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 there.
Kapanya po rin yun eh. Amazing and beautiful. Amen. Amen. Jesus is born. Jesus is born. I I want to say that it's it's been um I want to begin by saying thank you to the teachers. Let's say thank you to the teachers, church. You know, it's not easy for them to work with this group of young people. I also want to say thank you to the parents. I know that especially this week several meetings were canceled because of the weather and the road, but we still want to thank God that they were able to meet and uh, follow through what they had desired and they had planned to do. Amen? Amen. Lastly, I also want to say that uh, uh, we, we thank the Lord because we thank the Lord because He is still King of Kings, 2,000 years ago he was born to this world and even today he still exists in our lives, amen? He never departed and forsake, forsook us. So we are just going to build on that story so that we can all just tie the pieces and come home together. As we do that, I just want to say a couple of things. Number one, please church, we want to continue reminding you that we are in the midst of our campaign for communication. You could see how the mics were just taking away from the... Did, did you see that? Yes, please, church. Our goal is $400. Kindly, if you haven't started, just pace yourself. $50 every Sabbath, $30 here, $100. And by the time we get to the second week of February of January, we shall have hit our goal of $80,000. So I'm asking you all, please, church, kindly, 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 it steals the joy of what people have prepared when those uh, these equipments don't serve us well. So with that being done and said, just again, bow with me. We're going to expound further on that story. Father God, we thank you because you were born 2,000 years ago here on earth. We thank you because you continue existing. We thank you because you are in our lives. We ask you, Lord, as we look into your word, that you may speak to us. For we pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to say that when it comes around this time of the year, we are in that mood of closing the year. God has been faithful. God has seen us. God has brought us through the year 2022. I just want to pause for a second and ask you, think about this year. Think about when Christ, and, and, and we, we, we're, we're building on the same thing, we're building on the same thing, but I want, I want you to pause with me for a second and ask yourself a question. 
What was your lowest moment of the year 2022 so far? Pause and think about, was there ever a time in 2022 where you felt that, why did I become an adult? Was there a time in 2022 where you felt like your world was falling apart? Was there a phase, a time in this year, during this year, as we have gone through, that you felt as though Jesus had forsaken you? I'm here to announce to you that Jesus was not necessarily born on, the, on, on, on December 25th. That is the date that people have, have put in place, but when you follow history, when you study scholarly, you find that Jesus was not necessarily born on December 25th. However, we celebrate the fact that he was born so that he can save us in this world. But here's the question that I want to ask you all today. When Jesus is born in your life, what happens? When Jesus is born in your life, what happens? Perhaps some of us have decorated our house. We have the trees, we have the boxes, and we have the gift as a symbol of the, the man who brought gifts when Jesus was born. Perhaps some of us, we are more excited because growing up, you know, Christmas is the only time that we had chapati and mandazi because that was saved for Christmas. And those memories still linger in our hearts. But I want to invite you to reflect a little bit that when Christ comes into your life, trouble brews. I invite you to join me in the book of Luke chapter 1. And I'm not going to read the entire text, but I'm going to give you some synopsis here. See, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was born, the world was not celebrating as the world today is celebrating because of the birth of Jesus. 2,000 years ago, when the news was announced that Jesus was going to be born, certain things had to change. And I'm going to ask for a favor here. I'm going to ask somebody to help me with two chairs. I want two chairs to help me illustrate my point. Please give me two chairs, one on this side and one on this side. And I'm reading as the chairs are being put, and I'm reading from Luke chapter one, and I'm reading from verses 30, verses 27. A virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, rejoice, Highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled. When she saw him, and I'm going to repeat that, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greetings was this. Then the angel of the Lord said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. For you have found favor with God. The story is told of a young girl. We are not necessarily told the age of this young girl. But scholars believe that this young girl was a teenager. Anywhere between the age of 15 to 17 years old. She was living her life like every other teenager in this world. And I'm going to invite my friend, my sister, Mercy. I'm sorry to pick on you. I didn't prepare you or anyone. I just let them come. Mercy, if you can come up here. She was probably around the age of Mercy. All right, say amen to Mercy as she comes. I didn't prepare her for this. Amen, church? <laughs> say amen for Mercy. <laughs> if you were not 17, I would have not called you. Amen. Now... She was probably around the age of my sister Mercy here. And as Mercy is seated here, she is going through her life. She is thinking about graduation. She is thinking about college. But in this case, as we read the story of Mary, she is betrothed. Now, betrothed means that she is in modern era and modern day. She is engaged. Now, in those days when you are engaged, that means that you are sealed. You are done. Dowry has been paid. There is no turning back. Amen? 
There was another gentleman who was in the picture that we're going to read, and, and Matthew does a better job in telling us this story. But Luke is focusing on the story of the young girl by the name of Mary. But there's a Joseph who's lingering somewhere, and I'm going to invite my brother Jaden. Join me up here, brother Jaden. His name is Joseph for today. Say amen to Jaden as he comes up here. Amen. These two young people, please, parents, Elder George, uh, Sister Naomi, this is a story. It is a story. It's a, it's a story. Amen. Please, it's a story. <laughs> Amen. It's a story. So as the custom was, the parents of Joseph have come to the parents of, of Mercy. In the Kisi culture, they have done what they do best. They have negotiated the dowry and the deal has been sealed and the story is now we are just waiting for a date and a day. But then before the day happens, there shows up an angel. And I want you to understand what the angel says, the verses that I've read. The angel says, says, says to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name is Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name is Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, for the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled with the saying, and considered what manner of greetings was this. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in the womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name who? Please talk to me. You shall call his name who? Jesus. According to Luke, it's Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and the kingdom will end. Now, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me here. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know Man, Mary is troubled. He, she understands that by her culture, she is not supposed to sleep with a man before she has been what? Officially married. And here comes an angel and says that she is going to be pregnant and she is going to have a child. Mary, as a teenager, she is not only wrestling with the issue of pregnancy, but she is wrestling with how will this happen? Joseph, on the other hand, is living his best life as a carpenter. He has no story what's happening in this side of the world. As he continues with his life, Mary is engaging and speaking to the angel. But I want you to follow this. The Bible says that the angel said and answered, said to her, the Holy Spirit will become upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, Elizabeth was a relative who also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month of her who was called barren. Now, this is the, time, the key text that we read, and we're going to start expounding. Stay with me, stay with me. For with God, nothing is what? Please just say, the, the year has been rough on you. And, and if I ask you right now, how did you make it the end of this year so far? You will say, even I do not know how this fire has come. Can somebody attest to that? Now the Bible says, for God, well, for, with God, nothing is what? Is impossible. And then the Bible says, then Mary said, behold the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. The angel departed from her. Sister Mary, mercy, it's about to go down. <laughs> I want you to understand this. According to the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, the Bible says that if any young girl was to be pregnant out of wedlock, she was to be taken outside the city and she was to be done what? Stoned. And Mary understands that by me saying yes to this, I am contractually agreeing that I am ready to be stoned to carry Jesus in my womb. Somebody didn't hear that. She was writing a death sentence. She knew that accepting this angel and the word of the angel that had come to her, by her accepting that, she was decreeing that I am ready to be stoned for the sake of carrying Jesus in my womb. 
How ready are you to be stoned for Jesus? Yes, we talk about Jesus. Yes, we say I want Jesus in my heart. But do you understand what this meant to Mary? Do you understand that she was going to be stoned? Do you understand that this was the end of Mary? Do you understand that not only was she going to bear uh, the burden of being pregnant, uh, the burden of looking at her, uh, the burden of her friends laughing at her, uh, the burden of explaining what's happening, but she understands that uh, the reason why I am willing and ready to risk it all, it is because I understand in whom I, am I, 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 in whom I have believed. You see, there's a narrative and a notion in Christianity today that when I accept Christ, my life should be simple. That when I choose Jesus, my life should be Netflix and chill. That when I say yes to the Lord, everything in my account will be filled. That when I say yes to the Lord, my marriage will be okay. That when I say yes to the Lord, my children will be in accordance to God's will. That when I say yes to the Lord, my leadership will flourish. That when I say yes to the Lord, everything will fall alive. May I submit and suggest to you that the woman she said yes to the Lord, her life turned upside down. Nobody's saying amen with me so far. Mary understands that she is signing herself to three things. Thing number one, she is signing for capital punishment. What did I say? She is signing her life for what? Capital Punishment. Point number two. She is signing herself for divorce. What did I say? Please talk to me. What did I say? The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew chapter 1. And now I'm reading verses 20. I'm reading verses 20. But while he thought about these things. Talking about Joseph. Behold, no, no, verses, verses 18. Now the birth of Jesus was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she found the child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, was not wanting to make a public example. She was minded to put her away. How? Secretly. Other versions of the Bible say that Joseph was willing to divorce Mary. I want to ask you guys a question. This young girl has not even been married yet. She doesn't even understand what marriage is. She just did an engagement party. She invited all of you and sent her cards to your, to, and you came to our, our engagement party. You showed up with the Russia clothes and looked very nice. Food was served and you sang all the songs. And all of a sudden, before the marriage takes off, the gentleman here, hearing of the news that this young girl is pregnant, decides that I am going to divorce her. Before even she starts a marriage, before even she gets in and says, yes, I fully do, before everything started, before she even knew a relationship, before anything happened, she was already standing in front of the court for divorce. Accepting Jesus, accepting Jesus, my brother Joseph, does not necessarily mean that your life will be a sailing through and smooth and in everything. When Mary accepts Jesus, she signs up for capital punishment. When Mary accepts the pregnancy of Jesus, she signs up uh, for divorce. When Mary accepts for, 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 for the pregnancy of Jesus, she accepts that her health will not be the same again. Morning sickness at the age of 17. Have no husband to go to the store and to bring her cravings. Uh, dealing with the pressure of society and community and everybody looking at her. But when she remembered whom she was carrying, she was at peace because of whom she was carrying. Now on the other hand, there's a handsome man here by the name of Joseph. Joseph is a just man, the Bible calls him. And Joseph has three options. Option number one for Joseph is that if he denies and says that I am not, and that sounds like Morish, <laughs> I am not the father of the child. This girl, the Lord says she has to be stoned. He either protects her or says I am not the father of the child and sees the entire city drag her and go stone her. Option number two that Joseph has is to fake it till you make it and say, I am the father of the child. 
But he understands by him acknowledging and saying that he is the father of the child, the parents, the relatives, the family, the society, the culture. Everybody will ask him, but when did you start living together? And he will have to answer those questions every single day. When did I start living with her? Is he ready to protect her by all means? Is he ready to save her? Is he ready to say, I will take it for you? Or is he going to say, Kila mutu na maali yake bwana. Joseph has a decision to make. Decision number two. Decision number three, which is the one that he asks for, is to say that, you know, let me call the elders from the side of my family. Let me call them and they call the elder. I'm going to call the elders and I'm going to call the parents of mercy and they're going to sit together. And I'm going to call the elders of the church and I'm going to call the government and I'm going to sit down and tell them, listen, you know, I love mercy so much. Okay, okay, Mary, Mary, Mary. I love Mary so much. Please remind me. Sorry about that. I love Mary so much. However, for the few months we have dated, for the few months we have lived together, for the few months we have stayed together, I, uh, I have been in a relationship with her. I have prayerfully prayed with the Lord. I have read the books of Patriots and Prophets. I have read the Bible. I have prayed to the Holy Spirit. And now I am convicted that it is better for one to break an engagement rather than continue to it and suffer in a marriage. Therefore, I'm going to return the dowry. I'm going to return the calls. I'm going to return everything. It is okay. Uh, you know, I want her to live and continue her life. So secretly, I am going to divorce her. Or as Joseph is contemplating on all this, uh, the angel of the Lord appears and shows up in him. And here's what the angel of the Lord says. He says, Joseph, do not put away Mary. Verse 20. But while he thought of these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take your, uh, Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph now has to live with a stigma in his life. But when Joseph understands who Mary is carrying, and when Joseph understands that this is Jesus, and the Bible that he had read the Torah, and the upbringing that he had brought, and understanding that the Messiah will be born in Judea, and him being convicted of the word of his childhood, for the word in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God, for him being convicted, he understood whom Mary was carrying. And when he knew who Mary was carrying, there was nothing that was big enough other than the honor of being the father of Jesus in his earthly world. Yes, stigma was going to be there. Yes, people were going to speak. Yes, the things were going to be said. But when you know whom you serve, when you know whom you stand for, when you know where you've been, when you know what he can do, you will say, for the sake of Jesus, it is worth it. Christianity, and when we talk about Christmas, in this day and age and era, we have cheapened Christianity to the boxes and the trees. We have cheapened Christianity to the colors that we wear, and there's nothing wrong with all those things. We have cheapened Christianity to the songs and the carols we sing, and there's nothing wrong with that. But may I submit to you that 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was being born, it was not easy. May I submit to you that 2,000 ago, when Jesus was being conceived in Mary, her life had to come to a standstill. Her being had to change completely. Her health was in jeopardy. Her, her, her relationship was facing divorce. Her, her, her life was, was, was capital punishment that she was looking for. But when she looked at the cross, and when she saw who she was carrying, it was worth it to carry. You see, Joseph understood that he will never understand what is going on. And Joseph understood that he was going to be labeled in his entire life. But for the sake of Christ, it was worth it. You see, whether you like it or not, troubles will come in your way. But the question that I pose for you all today is this. Will troubles come to you with Christ in you or Christ outside you? She still had trouble. He still had trouble. But the difference was, 
with Jesus in the vessel, they go smile through the storm. One point and then I'm done. When we read the story of Jesus, there are a few things that we miss. And I want to share with you something here that we miss and then I'm done. I'm in Luke chapter 2. And when it came to pass those days that the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world would be registered. This census took place in, uh, uh, while Quinarius was the governor of Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house of the lineage of David. Please listen to me. I make two points here. I expound on those and I'm done. Mary is talking to the angel in Nazareth. Joseph is from Bethlehem. In other words, he might have moved from Bethlehem to go maybe look for a job in Nazareth. Maybe he had gone for further studies in Nazareth, but he was not in Bethlehem. And so in those days when the census was done, you had to go back to your what? Your original city. And the city in this case was Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread. Now Joseph takes Mary and they are walking back to Bethlehem. I want you to understand something here, church, please. Joseph left Bethlehem single. Joseph left Bethlehem and he said, I have met Mary. He brought his parents, they met Mary, and they went back to Bethlehem. And they understood that day and time will come before Joseph comes back and officially everything is well done. But the census is here. Joseph has to bring Mary back. And may I submit and suggest to you that if you read this verse in the NIV version, it does not say that they went into an inn. It says they went into a what? A guest house. Follow me, church. You see, can you help me understand? How can Joseph go back to his family in Bethlehem and in his own house, there was no place for him and Mary to stay? His own parents were still in Bethlehem. His own uncles and aunties were still in Bethlehem. His grandparents were still in Bethlehem. He comes with Mary, who is nine months pregnant, about to give birth, and his relatives cannot even open the door for him to stay there. And as he comes into the house, he realizes that there is no room, there is no guest room. NIV says guest room. Now when you read the original Hebrew Bible, it says that there was no quarter. In other words, the inn that the Bible is talking about here is not necessarily in a hotel because Bethlehem was a small town. He had gone back for the census, but even his own family, they did not have a space for Jesus to be born there. And the houses those days, the way they were built, upstairs is where the guests used to stay. And that is when the book of Acts chapter 2, when they all gathered, where did they go? They went to pray where? Upstairs, when you hear the story of Elijah, Elijah, Elisha, when the young man died, where did he go to raise the young man? They went upstairs. When you see Jesus raising, where do they go? They go upstairs. Upstairs is where the guests used to stay. But in this case, everybody was back in Bethlehem with a lady who's nine months pregnant and Joseph coming back to his family, but he could not find a place for Jesus to be born. Now, the way the houses were structured, at the bottom is where they used to keep the, their sheep, their cattle, and everything. And this is where Joseph, because even in his own household, he cannot find a place for Jesus to be born. He goes underneath where they put the stable for the animals to stay, and Jesus is born there. May I submit that when you carry Jesus, even your family will denounce you. May I submit to you that when you accept Jesus, even your friends will run away from you. May I submit and suggest to you that when you choose to follow Jesus, some relationships will have to be cut off. May I submit and suggest to you that yes, you have gone through a crisis in the year 2022, but my question I have for you, did you go with it in Jesus in you, or you went through it by yourself? His family could not take him on. Furthermore, Herod is that Jesus has been born. Now, now, as I make this statement, I have a question for you. In the world, which gender is majority, men or women? 
Say it with conviction if you believe. Men or women? Unanimously voted on if ever say aye. aye. All right. Even me, I assumed it's women. And I still believe, but I was doing some research and I realized we're almost the same. But I want to ask myself a question as we finish. When Mary and Mary and Joseph accepted to carry Jesus in their household, and when Bethlehem accepted for Jesus to be born there, there are men, there are boys under the age of two who an entire generation was wiped out. I think that's where the ratio was messed up, you know. May I submit and suggest to you that when Jesus comes in the city, some things that are strange happen. Imagine an entire generation of boys under the age of two had to be wiped out completely because Jesus came. When we talk about Christmas, my friends, it is about accepting Christ in your heart. And when you accept Christ in your heart, some things uh, will not remain the same. When Jesus comes, he cleans situations. When Jesus comes, he will rise trouble in your home. When Jesus comes, he will bring health issues in your family. When Jesus comes, he will do some strange things. But trust in him, for he knows what is best for you. You see, here's the difference. Whether you do choose Jesus or not, trouble will come your way. Whether you choose to say, yes, here, my Lord, trouble is coming your way. But even if you choose, and when you choose Jesus, still trouble is coming your way. But the good news is with Jesus in the vessel, he can see me through my troubles. And the good news is that when you accept Jesus, even in health, Jesus will take care of your health situation. When you accept Jesus, even if death becomes the norm of your day, your life, your family, Jesus says, trust me, I got you. You see, when you accept Jesus, even when people think and say and judge you and put stigma and everything, with Jesus in the vessel, you can still make it through it. You see, when you accept Jesus as a city, as a church, as a community, when we accept Jesus, accept some troubles to come in. But as long as we are standing at the feet of Jesus, we can sail through the storms of life. I don't know about how your year has been 2022. I don't know what you have gone through, but I'm here to tell you, trust in Jesus. I'm here to tell you that through the storms, it is in Jesus that you are safe. Not in your pastor, not in your elder, not in your church, not in your creed, but in Jesus, you are safe and sound. But for this festivity season, Christ is asking for a gift. Just one gift that he's asking from you. And the only gift that Christ is asking from you is simple. There is no money that you can bring to Jesus because he owns the world. There is no talent that you can bring to Jesus because he gave it to you. There is no gift that you have that can surpass what God can give. But this afternoon, Jesus is knocking in your heart and he's saying the only gift that I want you to give me today is the gift of your heart. Will you trust me with your heart? Will you trust me with your life? No matter how dark it is, no matter where you have been, no matter what the year has brought, no matter what people have said, no matter the experience of life, as Jesus is saying, just like the man who brought the gifts when Jesus was born, today, bring the gift of your heart to the Lord. He is inviting you and he is saying, and he is saying just as you are, come, just as as you are. You don't need to change anything. You don't need to do anything. He is saying, yes, Christ was born, and I only need two things. Number one, I want you to bring me the gift of your heart. I want you to bring me the gift of your heart. Number two, I want you to accept me in your life. Like Mary and Joseph accepted me, great things came out of them. I want you to accept me. 
Carry me this time, not in your womb, but in your heart. And even though the storms will come, because you are in my heart and I am in your heart, trust me, I will carry those for you. Is there anyone this morning who is saying, yes, I have seen the storms of life. Yes, I have gone through some issues. Yes, I have experienced 2022 has been rough. But now I understand that with God, nothing is impossible. And I want to say, Lord, I want you to be in my life so that everything will be possible. Is there anyone with me here who would like to sing? Lord, I want you in my heart. Lord, it has been rough and let me guarantee you something. 2023 is not going to be any easier. It doesn't change because the calendar has changed. But with Christ in our hearts, whatever it is that the devil has prepared, whatever storms that will come, Whatever issues that we go through with Jesus in the vessel, I can smile at the storm. If this is your desire, I'm inviting you to stand up. I saying, Lord, I wasn't faithful enough with my heart. I was faithful in bringing the gifts of tithes and offering, but not my heart. I was faithful in bringing whatever else, my time, my family, my everything else, but my heart, I have not brought it to you, Lord. Yes, God, I have shed tears throughout this year. Yes, Lord, I have gone through circumstances this year. Yes, Lord, I have been misjudged this year. Yes, Lord, my family has gone through a crisis this year. Yes, Lord, my health has gone through issues this year. Yes, Lord, even my family could not house me in the house. But Lord, I now understand that the moment I accepted you, this was the journey to walk but with you. I can smile. While you're standing, second appeal, simple, plea. For those of you who are aware I was preaching last night, I shared this story, and I want to bring it home again. See, a few years ago, there's a man who was brought to the hospital, I believe it was in Philadelphia. He had just been shot or injured, and he was about to die. And when they got him to the hospital, oh, he was an organ donor, and everything in his body was shutting down except for his heart. His heart was still beating. He was faintly beating. The doctors quickly operated in him, on him, and they took the heart out because he was an organ donor, and then they, they revitalized the heart, and he started to beat. Boom, boom, boom. But as the heart was going, and there's a man across the nation who was dying, and his, his vitals were shutting down. He needed an organ donor. He needed a heart to be replaced in his life. And quickly the phone rings and says, we have a match. They take the heart that had been revitalized and they fly to the other hospital and the man is given an open heart surgery and he has his heart. Ten years later, the daughter of the man who donated the organ, is, she is getting married. And as she's getting married, she remembers and says, I wish my father was alive to walk me down the aisle. Then she remembers, my heart, the heart of my father is beating somewhere. She sat the man and wrote a message and wrote to, to the man and said, listen, man, I'm getting married. And my father is not here to walk down. But I know you have the heart of my father. Will you be willing to walk me down the aisle? The night before they met, they hugged each other. They cried. They shed tears. The day of the wedding happened. They held hands down the aisle. The gentleman walked to this lady. She took her hand and she put in the heart of the man. And she could hear the heart of the father of beating. Your heart is dying. But Christ wants to carry it for you. He's saying, I'm your father. Trust me. Trust me with everything. Trust me with the abuses you get. Trust me with the things that are saying. Trust me with your resources. Trust me with your family. Carry me and I will carry you. And you know that you have not let God carry you. Carried yourself through this storm. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. As I pray with those who are in agreement with me, saying, Lord, despite everything that will come in my life, help me to trust you. Carry my heart through it all. Loving Father God, we thank you for this far that you've brought us in the year 2022. At some point, if we can be honest, we felt like there was nothing worth it to live for. There are perhaps moments in our lives 
that we, we use our own methods, ideas, suggestion, counsel, and wisdom. We've gone through agony and the pain in our homes. We've gone through agony and the pain in our personal lives. We have gone through agony and pain as a church. We have gone through agony and pain as individuals. But today, Lord, we come here to say, perhaps we did that because we carried all these burdens by ourselves. But today, Lord, take my heart and seal it, O oh Lord. Take our lives, Lord, and make it yours. Carry these burdens to us, for us. See us through, Lord. Remind us that Christianity is not going to be easy. Remind us that when we will accept you, just like Mary, people will look at us a certain way. Remind us that Moses had to run away for his life. Remind us that Daniel had to be thrown in the lion's den. Remind us that Jeremiah had to run for his life. Remind us that Rahab had to risk his life. Remind us that Ruth had to be a foreign country. And so if these patriarchs went through and you saw them through that, see us through our storms. You will fight for us, Ebenezer. When you come in our lives, we shall have peace that surpasses all understanding. It doesn't mean that everything will be smooth, but we will have peace through the storms. This is my prayer for us as a church. This is my prayer for your children who have suffered and experienced it all simply because they chose to be called by your name. This is my prayer as we in this festive of remembering that Christ was born. Though not to the 25th, but the fact that Christ was born. Please, Lord, be born in our hearts. We choose you today. Accept us as we are. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Master.